Hi everyone, welcome to today's installment of uh, the Build Your Simulation Moldflow IQ. Uh, today we have Beth Maleka and Paul Larder both speaking to you about understanding Moldflow's uh, automated report tools, the new scripting tools available in the 2017 version of Insight. Um, Today, as with all other webinars, uh, the slide deck will be available for download, and we'll go through and discuss where you can find that, as well as the uh, YouTube recording of this as well in the following slides. Throughout the whole presentation, feel free to ask questions th along the way. Um, it is just on that right panel that you see on the WebEx interface, and we have Paul Beth, myself, Jay Shoemaker, and a few others here to help answer any questions that you may have. As with all the other webinars, if you're not familiar with our webinar series, uh, I know it's been a few months now since we've had a multiple one. So uh, a couple of the past ones that we've done are performing DOEs. Uh, we do anything from Moldflow Insight in, uh, webinars as well as advisor webinars. So we've been trying to introduce a couple more advisor ones in there for the, those users. And then matching simulation to reality, which is applying both concepts that you can use for both of those programs. A couple of the upcoming topics that we have listed are the cooling methods within Moldflow Insight, as well as identifying mesh and geometry issues in your simulation. Again, this will be uploaded, this whole recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is Autodesk Sim 360. And we have a, an, an entire uh, playlist there for the webinar series, including Moldflow, or simulation Moldflow products, as well as the other simulation product lines. And if you got this link for joining the webinar today from a colleague of yours or somewhere else, uh, you can certainly sign up through any of those uh, venues listed there. The forums, uh, autodesk.com slash help webinars, the SIM hub, or else a uh, direct email. Now, this is just something that we like to bring up just before diving into the information of the webinar. Uh, for the su technical support team, which is myself and the rest of the individuals who put these help webinars together. Uh, we also create help articles that we post on Autodesk Knowledge website. So if you go to knowledge.autodesk.com, uh, we have all of the Autodesk products are listed there. And we have articles that specialists uh, such as ourselves, as well as users write and share the content for resolving issues or how-to documentation. And down below is just a reminder for the current service packs available for the 2017 version. Uh, again, it's always nice or a good idea to keep up to date with those. And if you're having trouble trying to find where to access those, you can go to that knowledge.autodesk.com and uh, backslash download, and you'll be able to get to those download pages. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Beth. And she'll start you off with today's agenda, just what we're, we'll be discussing today, and go from there. Beth? Hi, everyone. And as Kristen said, thank you for joining the webinar today. I am going to run through a brief overview of the topics we're going to discuss. Uh, first, we're going to touch on why we as users should use custom reports. Then we will discuss an overview of the report components, specifically the three key elements. Paul will then do a demonstration for you, showing you how to apply the components we will discuss today to create your own custom reports. So first, why, first we will discuss why we should use these custom reports. We should use custom reports because they automate the generation of reports and can reduce, reduce the manual work of creating these reports by up to 80%. Custom reports offer an alternative to the existing report generation tools. They are customizable for non-programmers. Uh, these reports can be created in your own company's templates, um, as well as these custom reports can produce plots which do not exist today. We should also use custom reports because it is a simple way to generate reports. They are also editable in any text generator. 
Custom Reports also generates simple, customizable PowerPoint templates, which can be easily branded. Now I'm going to dive deeper into an overview of the report components, specifically what we refer to as the three key elements. The three key elements or files that you need to generate automated custom reports are the custom report VBS file, the report RPT file, and the report PowerPoint template. I would also like to point out that currently custom reports can only be generated in our Autodesk Moldflow Insight software. The custom report VBS file is the main driver of the API that generates the report. The report.rpt file defines what to include in the report, and the report PowerPoint template defines what the report format is. The first report component that I will discuss in more detail is the custom report VBS file. The custom report VBS file is a standard script provided with the 2017 Moldflow release. It will not work with previous Moldflow releases. Um, you can access the custom report by navigating to the Moldflow ribbon, going to view user interface, and then checking the box next to command line. Once you turn on the command line, there is this is an additional larger image uh, showing you exactly where you would want to input the type of custom report that you want to generate. Um, you can see it highlighted by the red box. There are three ways to run the custom report script. You can run with full path, which looks in a specific location for the actual RPT file that you are referring to. You can run with no arguments, uh, which means that you do not have to specify what report you want to generate because the custom report has one built in called default. And running with no arguments pulls the default RPT file. Lastly, you can run with one argument, which is similar to running with full path, except it looks for the report in a certain area and the report path, the report path search applies. The custom report VBS script locates your RPT file by searching these folders in this order. Uh, it first searches the current project directory. It then searches the current user. And lastly, it searches through the current release. These are the only folders in which you can save your RPT files. Uh, the report output includes the report name, which is the model name underscore report name, and it gets written to your current project directory. Directory. Um, now I'm going to talk about the PowerPoint templates that are generated through creating these automated custom reports. The automated custom reports use standard Microsoft PowerPoint templates. Uh, the extensions .pot, .potx, and .potm are all supported. Only the title slide and title and content slides are used. There is no custom slide support. Um, this is an example of a simple template. Uh, it has a title and content area. These are some other examples of different PowerPoint templates that you can use. Um, the last of the three key automated custom report components I will discuss is the report RPT file. The report RPT file only uses a standard text or a Unicode text file. Uh, comma separated values are used to separate the field. Apostrophe or hash are used for comments and the text is not case sensitive. This is an example of the filling RPT file. This is one of the standard reports that are located in your install directory. Um, at first glance, this report may seem a bit confusing, but Paul will show you how simple it is through his demonstration shortly. In the RPT file, we use control words, and these are some examples of the report-related controls, and include information such as title, um, if you want to add an image, template, and option. I'm now going to discuss a few of the controls and you can reference back to these in the future when you are generating your own custom reports. 
So these are study-related controls. Uh, they include information such as part geometry, part mesh information, material information, uh, the actual analysis results, and processing information. These are the result-related controls. Um, they include your plot information and how many plots you would like to include, such as one plot, one plot with notes, one plot with four views, two plots, or four plots. These are additional, more special result-related controls, uh, which include items such as animation and histogram plots. This is an example of using control words to modify your .rpt file template. Um, next, Paul is going to build on everything I just covered and give a demonstration on how to uh, create these automated custom reports. So I'm going to pass it over to Paul. Thanks, uh, Beth, for that um, overview. So hopefully everybody can see my screen. Just one, a couple of little key things. To get the best out of your reports, it is best to resize or get your model in the orientation you wish. As on my screen, I've got a wide um, laptop screen, so it may even be best to shrink down the software and resize to the to a more suitable aspect ratio. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to keep my screen full screen. Now, as Beth mentioned, we need to navigate to the um, command line, so view tab, user interface command line, and here we simply type custom report, and I'm just going to hit return. And what that does is it's just running the basic custom report script, which if we don't report report and the default report template, I'll show you where these are located afterwards, but just to show you how easy it is and what's generated for the script to run. And there, you should always wait for the report complete uh, message to come up. If there's any errors, so basically you'll get errors when you're writing your own reports. Because you might write a typo, etc. There will be a message telling you what line in your RPT file you've made a mistake on. So once you click OK, we can go down the bottom here, and we can see it's quite a basic PowerPoint template we've used. We have a title. Author is where we'd put the name. We've got some geometry, some mesh details a little bit more mesh information, some material data, what analysis we've run, and at the bottom, a couple of pictures. So that is the basic report. I'm just going to close that down, and I'm going to run another one, and then we will have a look at the final report that's generated, and we'll look into the um, RPT file. So I've already run one, so again, type in custom report and then the name of the RPT file you're referring to. It is important put, to put the dot RPT at the end for it to run. And there again it goes off. Now unlike previous releases of software you can click on your screen and do other things but it is still advisable maybe to go off and make a cup of tea when these reports are running just so it does the image capture and other things correctly. But it's not as um, as bad as previous releases when if you click on the screen when you're generating a report, you get the screen thereafter. Again, we get the report complete. And if we look now, again, this is using a a blank first screen, I'd change some text in the RPT file to put my name, but now we can see we're using a different PowerPoint template. So this is for the model, and we can have more than one PowerPoint template 
in the report. So we're talking about geometry or about the model. So the first few slides are model related. So we've got a nice PowerPoint to reflect that. We scroll down, we'll suddenly see that now we're using a different PowerPoint template to show the fitting results. You'll also notice as we scroll through the results that we have here a plot with some notes. Again, another standard result. Here we have two plots. This is what we call a stop animation. So we have a fill time plot and it's taken the fill time from start to end and divided um, by six. The next image is similar but we've actually put some labels on to show you those time steps for each image. And again, a similar layout. So what I will do now is I will keep this PowerPoint open and we will go and look at the RPT file to see how that information was put onto the screen. So as Beth mentioned, when you run the custom report, it looks in three locations for your RPT files and your PowerPoint templates. The first location would be your current project directory, so I'm working in custom report demo directory and in here I have a copy of some of the default RPT files. If we just go and have a quick look where the standard ones are, if we go to your default install location, so program files, Autodesk, Morflow Synergy 2017, data and reports, everybody will have these same reports for you to play with. So after this demonstration you can go away and create your own reports if you wish or you can ask us questions and I'll come back to you with how to create your own reports if you've not followed. So we'll go back to where I'm working and we will find the fit-in RPT file. So here's the PowerPoint. That's the fit-in PowerPoint. It's just a basic PowerPoint with a title and content area. And I'm just going to open the RPT file. So let's shrink that a bit. So the first bit, title page, is one of the um, control words. And then certain control words will have different options after them. So in this case, for a title page, it's looking for a title and an author. So that is showing you where my name appeared in the report. The next is an option keyword. In this case, we're using text font size 20. So we can change that. There are, are, are other option keywords. Um, we'll supply a list or the list of the other option keywords maybe in the um, PowerPoint that Beth presented. Then the next line is the template. So template is asking here to pull the model PowerPoint template. And we have an argument, 155. This is the left margin. So if we leave the left margin field blank, it will use the default setup from the Visual Basic script. So you can have some control on the left margin. The reason we use 155 in this example is because the template has a left margin with a title, so we want to push the images a bit further to the left. Then we come down to some other keywords, geometry information, mesh information, advanced. So advanced are keywords that help put a bit more information in the report. So if we go to mesh statistics, we can also see we have aspect ratio. So what we will do for the next run is I'm just going to remove the word advanced so we can see what happens next. And again, the others speak for themselves. Material information, advanced means it pulls a bit more information out of the, study, um, the analysis. Then in this report, we're using a second template. So again, we use the the control word template and now we're going to pull the filling PowerPoint template so we'll scroll down to that area 
So you can see it changes within the same RPT file. Again, we're pushing the image 155 um, from the left. And let's start looking at some of the plots and other information we can get into the report. So one plot, so what this does is one plot, we'll put one plot in the report. We have to give it a name. Now, Beth mentioned that the um, information in the RPT file is not case sensitive. That is true for all the control words and other information, but when it comes to results, the results have to match what you see in your results list within the analysis. So fill time, capital F, it has a small t. If we put a capital T there, you will probably get an error message at the end of the, during the script to say it's failed. That's a general mistake that tends to happen when you're writing these reports. And the other control is the orientation. So here we're using the word current. We use smart options. So actually, if I delete the word current, believe the comma, the software will automatically choose current as the view. That might be shown a little bit later on in some of the other examples. So we've modified that. Then the next plot, we have pressure at end of fill. So again, one plot, pressure at end of fill, and we're using the current view. So we'll, let's change the view here. So in, for the next run through, we use the word top. So this is using all the words from the view cube. So top, back, front. I think we can also have back, left. So if you put these words in, that is going to change the orientation of that plot. The next slide, we had some notes, and simply the control word is one plot with notes. Again, pressure at end of field, and we're looking at the current view. So hopefully by now you're seeing the flow of how these reports are written. Again, we've got another one. Now we have a bit, a bit of a different um, syntax at the beginning of the results. Some, some plots, as you may know, are specific to dual domain and three, uh, mid plane and then 3D. So, so we can have one RPT file for different model types or different mesh types. For mesh specific plots, if we put in here mid plane and fusion, the weld line, air traps, and for the 3D, we've got the weld surface formation. The script will ignore them if we're running the report on, say, a dual domain model, but then we're calling a result for 3D. So it's smart in the way that it won't give you a, mess, a failure if we put in a plot that doesn't exist. If we didn't put 3D in, in front of two plots and then called world line service formation result, the script would fail and tell you that plot doesn't exist. So it's, it's smart that you can have one report for both model types. Now this looks a little bit more complicated of course we've got two plots but what's happening here is it's the arguments that we need to know afterwards these commas and this, this is where when you look at reports without understanding them it gets a little confusing. So two plots the first thing is expect, um, expecting is a name of one of the plots in this case world line then we give it its view so it's the view orientation for the first result then we're specifying the second result, and again it's view. So if we scroll down there, here we are, we've got two plots, isometric, isometric. So maybe we'll go in there and make a change. So here I'll put front, and again the next plot is similar. Then we're going to get on to some of the um, the special reports, the one-stop animation plots. So if we scroll down, so if we look at this plot, if we look at the syntax how that was created, we type in the um, control word which is stop animation. What result we're showing, so in this case fill time, then the next two values represent the number of rows and the number of columns and then the view. Now after current, which is the view, I haven't um, 
specified anything for the bottom row. So the first one current is for the top row, and if I comma top, that's the bottom row. But because it was blank, it's used those smart options again, where it just knows that if nothing's specified, then it will default to what it should be as standard. On the next plot, it's a similar layout, but you notice we have labels. So if we go back in and look at this, stop animation, we're showing full time. We have two rows, four columns. We've got front for the top row, so the top row is front. We have isometric for the bottom row. Yes means display labels, so that's why we're seeing the labels in this view. We never specify them on the line above. And yes means are those labels left justified? And as you can see, they're on the left. And then the last plot, similar again, pressure, two, two rows, three columns, current, yes. And you see this is where we're using the smart option. We're not actually told it the orientation of the bottom row. Because we want to then add in the the control word to turn labels on, we just leave it blank between the commas. And then yes means we display labels. We haven't done a further yes, so the labels are still on the right. So hopefully that explain that. I will save it and fingers crossed if I run it again. We hope not to get any errors, and we should see some of the changes we made in that RPT file. Hey, Paul. We had one question yes. come in. Um, Laura was asking mm -hmm. about the case sensitivity on the scripting and everything like that. Uh, in particular, she was yep. wondering if the views are case sensitive, so top or current or... Uh, front or I've not is. tried it. I, okay. I just out of out of um, habit, it, I always uppercase, but mm -hmm. it's it's something we could try. We, I'll, I'll do a demo. I'll try that. Okay, thanks. In the next run. For, um, also, what I haven't mentioned is we can use your own saved views. So if you actually go up and save a view, you should be able to call the name of that. I haven't tried it, but it is an option. So let me just continue. So the report is complete. Now this is where you need to try and remember what you changed. So mesh statistics, you see now we're missing from the previous report, we had actually the um, the aspect ratio showed. So in this case, the aspect ratio has gone because in the RPT file, we removed the word advanced. So it's a simple control to turn things on and off. Um, and then we go through. So fill time, you can see there was my top view. Again, the importance of knowing get, at the beginning, getting your screen and your model in the right orientation, not the orientation, but the right aspect ratio, because my screen is a bit stretched. It's come out like that. And again, we can go through. We changed that view as well to front. So it's very simple. Once you have your main RPT file written, you can copy and paste and just grow it. So hopefully that was um, easy to understand. So what I'm going to show now is run through just a, a little bit more of a, a fancy RPT file, just to show you could have your own company logo on the power point, so again, click go, now when these are running, as I said, it's best to sit back and watch or go make a cup of tea, I mean I haven't tried rotating while it's generating, but um, probably best not to.
what I'll quickly do after this as well um, is, is look at that case sensitivity for the um, the view. I'm sure it's only the result words. See the words, how, how the words are spelt in the results list is, is the important thing. What I would say at this point as well is at the end of the PowerPoint we will be mentioning I think a forum area where you can go and add requests. So this report generation is is in its early stages. We are very keen to sort of get feedback on what else you would like to see in these reports. Um, maybe the layout, um, different ways to display the results, etc. So, um, and we will gather all that feedback and go back to the developer that helped write this and we will see if some of that can be implemented. Um, so here it's finished and here you can see it's we call it fancy report, it's got just a different colour background. Again, your geometry, mesh statistics. Now, before any of you ask, it does look a bit silly having four decimal points for your aspect ratio, but the way the API and the scripting works is we have to go in, deep dive into the software and pull the information. And some things that you will think is simple to get is not that simple. So. So getting the um, aspect ratio just to be like to one decimal point or no decimal points is it, it's not as easy as it seems. And here material data, we we'll go to scroll down a bit more because I think lower on in here we have a few other plotted animation. So if I play the PowerPoint, again we can have a quick look at this the RPT file just so you can see what keywords we've used. And here are some of the um, results you don't normally get in the software. So here we're looking at a histogram of volumetric shrinkage. We've put 10 bucks. So we'll have a quick look at the RPT file afterwards just to show where that was generated from. Again, histogram but also with a plot your typical XY results, um, four plot result, again we'll have a quick whip through of the um, RPT file. So for that one we used just basically a one slide PowerPoint template and if we open up the RPT file Again, for that nice report, it's not that complicated. Here we're using one template, so the template is defined right at the beginning. This time you see there's a few more numbers. Because it hasn't got the, the left margin, like the word filling, as in the filling example, we've got the left margin at 20, the top at 150, and the bottom and right 20 and 10. Um, geometry information is the first block and one plot, so we've seen them already, stop animation we discussed in the fill-in. So here for the histogram, one histogram, we're calling the result, so we were looking at the volumetric shrinkage, how many buckets of information, so we had 10 lines, we can change that, and yes is if we display the statistics at the bottom, and the keyword for the other plot was histogram one plot, Again, volumetric shrinkage, the orientation, which we don't have to specify because that's one of the smart options. Um, 10 buckets and no because we did not want to see any statistics. So hopefully that's explained the RPT files and how they work. You can copy and paste bits of information or you can copy like all these plots and paste them in again. Um, and it's as simple as that. So what I'll just quickly go and do now is just open up that basic one and we'll do lowercase for that top view. So it's pressure in the fill, save. And you'll notice when I'm running these, all my PowerPoints 
this is the previous ones ones you've run so just pick up that and go are there any more questions Kristen before I finish and pass back to Beth uh, yeah, it looks like a couple more came in here. Um, we have one that goes more into uh, the advanced details that are available in the re reports. Uh, basically, they're asking if it's possible to display the clamp tonnage suggestions within any of the uh, yeah. scripting report. Uh, anything's, anything's possible. And that's why we really need to have your ideas written down so the forum post that we've created is an area where you can go and, and, and ask what you want to see and then we will go back to the developer and, and sit down and see what's possible. Most things are possible, it's just knowing what, what you want to see in these reports. This is, the, this is a new feature, it's very customizable, you don't need any programming knowledge as far as it is for the RPT files. If some of you know about scripting I want to get a bit more in depth. You are welcome to open up the VBS file and play around with that to make it even more customizable. So, if we just look at that report that was generated, I think I saw it as it was being pressure ender fill. So, yeah, it, it's not case sensitive, any of the, the words within the RPT. Um, the custom, the custom, um, Report VBS. I think it's in the um, default install directory. So it should be under data, I would imagine, and commands. There it is there. So that's a standard if we open that. Um, is that going to work? I don't know. Yeah. So you can see that is the VBS. So if, whoops, if you know a little bit about scripting you're free to go into this and modify this but this is where it gets the synergy it sets up the interface somewhere down here I can't see it but it will be calling the default RPT file on the default template we had that just so if you do run custom report without any arguments we don't want an error to appear so we got a very basic report that it will pull but you can read through this and make a lot more changes. We're setting up all the borders and other things within the report and that's what we can modify to help pull more information and put more keywords in. Yeah and that's where it really borderlines the advanced versus basic use of this report tool because we do yeah. have all those preloaded ones that you can easily just jump in and immediately start using. Uh, pretty simple to uh, pick up on those RPT file scripting uh, just with what, what Paul was explaining, you just change a couple words here and there and it can change how your report's really looking. But when you really want to dig into it, that uh, VBS script would be more for the advanced users. Okay, so okay. we do have well, another question here just while we're talking about those. Um, Jim was asking if it's possible to use or to pull a custom report. So. Uh, if you create a custom result in, uh, say, Insight, and you want to pull that into the report, are you able to uh, just use that name of the, the custom result? You should be able to, yes. Yes, that should be possible, as long as you get the syntax of the name correct. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that should be possible. Because that's the thing, if I put, I mean, we could run, if I put a mistake in, let's just see if it does that. So if it's not there, so fill time we know is there, so it'd be the same. If we now run, um, that was the filling, we may get an error. So that's just doing the geometry size of things. Sometimes if you actually click on the back, you might see the PowerPoint working in the background, what we're doing, but well, maybe it hasn't. I don't think. Which one did I modify? 
Yeah, so here we see it's run, but because it can't find the plot fill time. So I would imagine, yes, as long as you have whatever custom result you generate, make sure you get the syntax correct. Right, is that it? I will now conclude with the um, demonstration and trans back, transfer back to um, Beth. All right, great. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay. So basically in summary today, we discussed how to generate these automated custom reports uh, in, in Moldflow Insight 2017. Um, we covered in detail in through demonstration the three key elements for generating these automated custom reports, which are the custom report VBS file, the RPT file, the report RPT file, and the report PowerPoint template. Um, again, the custom report VBS file is the main driver of the API um, that generates the report. The report RPT file defines what to include in the report, and the report PowerPoint template it defines what the report format is. Uh, now we will uh, set aside some additional time for questions. Also listed here are some additional places to post your questions if you think of any additional ones after. Hey Beth? Yes? Uh, can you share your screen again? It looks like it might not be sharing for everyone right now. Yes, absolutely. Just to share those links there. Perfect. Can you see them now? We can. Thank you. Perfect. Sorry about that. So yeah, as Beth mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. that that link listed next to the forums, it, it it's just shown as the typical forum link. However, on the Moldflow forums, if you if you uh, go into there, we do have at the top of it a uh, floating link there that basically is feedback for this webinar. Again, it would be for suggestions or uh, any any ideas that you might come up with for these custom reports and how your company would best, uh, best be able to use these during it. Perfect. And do we have any other questions at the moment? Yep. So it looks like there is one more question here. Uh, could you also plot the viscosity of curves of a material automatically? So basically kind of going more, more deep into that material uh, data. Know, Paul, anything's you. possible. Well, okay. yeah, any, anything should be possible. Um, sure. It's, it's these sort of questions we need to see to see what what you want to be pulled. So, if you add these to that forum, I will after this um, this webinar, the questions come in, and then we'll pull through, and I will be talking to the developer, and we will discuss what is available, um, what is possible. So, I present. Zoom, will we be able to see who posted the comments, Kristen? So we can get back. Uh, so that one was from, it looks like, Harold Goats. All right. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get back to you. But yeah. Yes, and, and once it's, a matter, it's, it's a matter of deep diving into the software. So once we know what you want to pull, the information is there. Like the aspect ratio, the information is there. Sometimes it's not in a format we like. Um, but we're working on it. this. Is the first sort of pass, and hopefully this tool gets 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 more more powerful as it goes on. And we can have more control words. Uh, I mean, with the fancy PowerPoint, sometimes the font color was the wrong color. There'd be controls to, co to control the PowerPoint even from the RPT file. It's um it's in early stages. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. So, uh, thank you, everybody. I see, one, I, see, I see another question there on Excel. Oh. At the moment, it, yes. it's really no. I mean, it, it, it's a presentation. It, it's, it's a PowerPoint. Possibly we could go to Word, but then would we want to put this into Word? So, the idea is a report, and 
yeah, it's a, it's a PowerPoint report. But we can call to Excel. I mean, we're using Excel when we're running the report. If you actually switch to the PowerPoint and not the mole flow when it's running, you can see PowerPoint uh, Excel is being pulled to generate all the tables. Um, but yeah, it's a, not probably ideal for a report, just Excel. Great, thank you, Paul. Um, and up on the screen now, these are just some additional resources you can use to find information. Um, that first link there specifically uh, is the Autodesk University presentation, which will take you um, directly to a more detailed PowerPoint with some additional information uh, for some of the more, I guess, advanced users uh, on the report components that we discussed today. And um, at the very bottom, you can see today's uh, slide deck, so that's available for um, download as well. And with that, um, thank you very much, everybody.